Hi everybody, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.wordpress.com and today I'm going to be making a lovely little, hopefully lovely little, um, little just a little gift box holder um, and it's one of the first swaps I ever made for meeting up with my other demonstrators and you can see here it's a little box, it's decorated and it opens up and inside there is a lovely Elizabeth Shaw chocolate, which is a lovely minty plain chocolate and a candle which hopefully you can see there has also been stamped so very straightforward I mean you can do these using the envelope punch board but I thought for those of you who haven't got one it'd be quite useful for you to see how to do it without so here we go I'm just going to zoom out slightly so the first thing you need is a piece of five inch by five inch cardstock okay you see there five by five and you're going to score at seven eighths, one and five eighths, three and three eighths, one, two, three eighths, and four and one eighth. Turn it through 90 degrees and do exactly the same again. So, seven eighths, one and five eighths, three and three eighths, and four and one eighth. Okay, so that's all the scoring done. So you put that to one side now. Okay, so there you go, a piece of card which is scored in a very straightforward grid. Now, uh, what we're going to do now is actually do some stamping. I'm going to use the new Cucumber Crush ink, which is a lovely bright green really spring-like. It's not a very spring-like day here today. It is horrible and miserable. So um, a lot of this pattern is actually going to be cut away so I want to focus on these panels here which are the ones that are going to be on the top and the sides. So um, and obviously on, on the bottom as well which we've we'll seen. Very straightforward just simply stamp all over and this is using a flower patch stamp set, which is one which um, isn't being discontinued I'm, or retired, I'm pleased to say. It's a lovely stamp set and uh, very, very useful. I've used it lots. Okay, so I'm not too worried about these bits because they're actually going to form the tabs. So having stamped all over, what we're going to do now is actually score and fold the card. So fold it like so and just burnish I'm using Whisper White cardstock here which is always nice and it gives a nice clean, um, lovely clean white. So having folded and burnished you're then going to do some cutting. So you're actually going to cut away on all three corners to start off with. Okay so and cut away on all three corners and it's just the three little squares on all three corners okay so and then we're going to be cutting to make some tabs as well in a minute it just makes it easier when you've done all three or rather all four corners that's the third lot See here I'm using the Stampin' Up paper snips which are super sharp but they're lovely because they're so pointed right till the end you can uh, get right into the corners. So you now end up with a piece that looks like so and all you're going to do is cut to make some tabs. So each one just cut down and notch out. And those of you who've seen me making other square boxes will know that I like to have a tab on each of the sides, give it a bit of strength. So I tend to go around in the same direction. Okay, so there you go. So you've got four little tabs. Before you do any, any gluing, you're now going to go through and actually round the corners. 
Now it actually doesn't matter which you do, but you see here on this one, you only need to do one on each. So it doesn't matter. So I'm just using the Project Life corner rounder and I just fold in each of the flaps so you can really get that right in to round. So make sure you do the same one on each side. And the last one. Okay. And then very simply turn over. I'm using fuse here or you can use the red tape if you want. And literally just fold up. And this way, by using the same colour ink, you can actually coordinate it on white to go with whatever colour you know you, you, you want to do. So there you go, one little box, and you'll see that your mint pops in very nicely. And now we're going to do the candle. I've actually got a green candle here, and um, that's purely because that's the one I happen to have. The original one see here is actually a white candle, I think it was actually a vanilla scented one, um, but I've actually got a green one here. And for this you're going to um, again use the Cucumber Crush ink and actually just a piece of white tissue paper. Now tissue paper you can pick up, I picked this up in a local card shop, so literally just stamp onto it and you'll see there at the top um, these have got a matching punch and I find that if I, I work out which is my um, which way up for the punch that way I know I'm always going to get the punch from the right correct side so hopefully you can see that there oh, that's better there you go you can see it put a little T for top and I always stamp with that at the top so having um, stamped on the tissue paper um, what I then find is in order to punch out on tissue paper, the, the way to make this as easy as possible is literally just grab a piece of paper, grab a piece of paper, put the tissue paper on the top, then come in with your punch, both the paper and the tissue, line it up. and you can punch, and it punches straight through. I'll show you, if, if you try and do it on the tissue paper itself, you're not, it, it doesn't get such a clean cut, and you end up sort of, A, it's difficult to get in and out of, of, of your punch anyway, and you'll see here, you're sort of lining it up, and you think, ah, oh. and then when you come to punch it, it sort of scrunches it up, and you end up trying to get it out and tearing it, and it just doesn't work as well, but I find if I punch, with a piece of paper behind, it just makes the whole thing go through so much easier, which when you're doing a lot of these, um, makes quite a difference. So, having punched um, that out, I'm going to use now just a, any ho a single hole punch, just to punch a hole in the very centre. Um, you see, I don't know, you can see there, just a hole, and that then pops over candle. Now that's all well and good but obviously if you lit your candle now it would just go up in a puff of smoke. So excuse the noise but use a heat tool and you literally just hopefully there you go might be easier Use the heat tool until you can just see the wax just starting to melt. And you keep going around.
until that's all melted as it is. And then, while it's still warm, I just go along and pop down. It's not quite a perfect match. I pop those, push down those edges and tuck them in. You see there? And then you can still see there's a couple of bits which aren't quite melted. So just come in again with the heat tool. And there you've got your candle. Okay, so one candle now stamped on. Nobody would know. And then what you're going to do is pop that in the box and then to finish decorating um, to close it up you're going to just do a normal box close and I tend to close it up first there you go folds up and all I'm going to do now is on a spare bit of Whisper White cardstock and using the same Stamp it. This is the word window punch and just line that up in the middle. And then I just used a dimensional which because of the flat sides just fit perfectly on the back there. On one end only and just put that across the middle of your box. So, there you go, a lovely little individual tea light gift box. You can use as a party favour, pop in a bag, just as a little thank you, or as a little hello gift as I've done there. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.